Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be making homemade buttermilk biscuits and sausage gravy. It's gonna be good. Okay, so for my biscuits and gravy, I'm going to make some buttermilk biscuits. Here I have two cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, one and a quarter teaspoons of salt, and one teaspoon of sugar. I'm going to give that a mix and combine. Now I'm going to add in eight tablespoons of unsalted butter, and I'm going to work that into the dough with my dough cutter here. Okay, so the butter is worked into my flour mixture. I'm gonna get that off of the. Now I'm going to add eight fluid ounces of buttermilk. And when you make biscuit uh, dough, folding is key. You don't want to overwork anything. You want nice fluffy biscuits. Okay, so I'm going to flour my surface. And now I'm going to just kind of, I'll tell you what. And just get your biscuit dough onto the board. Um, I'm just going to press these out and form this into a, a flat surface to start cutting out my biscuits. And actually, let's do a little fold and then flatten it. That kind of creates layers in your biscuit dough. Okay, so I just pressed this out to about, a, I guess, a half inch thickness. And I'm using a large biscuit cutter today. By the way, in my last video, I didn't have my biscuit cutter. I couldn't find it. But alas, I have found my biscuit cutter. And then you'll just want to sort of dust it in flour and cut your biscuits. Now here's something that a commenter mentioned in my last video. Um, I failed to mention this, but because I didn't have my biscuit cutter, I had to sort of like twist it to get it to cut out. But twisting will sort of pinch off the edges and it won't give you that big rise to your biscuit. So if you have a good sharp, you know, biscuit cutter, that's that's gonna work better for you and basically you just place it where you want and just go straight down with it no twisting and then there you go and let me show you you see this edge see how it's not pinched off so that's gonna give you that rise to your biscuit so I'm just gonna continue cutting these and then I'm gonna place them on my cast iron skillet so I managed to get seven biscuits and the biscuit cutter I use is around two and a half to three inches in diameter, I believe. So what I'm doing is taking the residual buttermilk that was left in the in my measuring cup, and I'm just going to brush the tops of my biscuits. And if I need more, I'll just get more. You could do cream, you could do melted butter, it's up to you. And I'm going to be baking these in a preheated oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit, for about 15 to 17 minutes. Okay, so once my biscuits are done, I'm just gonna let them set here um, on the countertop until I'm ready to use them. Um, because I'm filming this in two parts, um, typically you'll want you know your gravy and your biscuits to get ready together. But here's what they, they look like. And as you can see, I got really good lift on this. So that makes the difference between twisting when you cut them out and just a straight cut. But either way, it's gonna be good. Okay, so for the sausage gravy, I'm going to be using one pound of store-bought breakfast sausage. Here I have a cold pan, and into my cold pan, I'm going to add my breakfast sausage. Now you'll wanna turn on the heat. I'm gonna put this on a medium, medium high to medium heat. And starting with a cold pan will help render out a lot of the fat in this breakfast sausage. And the fat will help us create a roux when I add the flour to it. So that's why I start with a cold pan. So I'm just going to break apart the meat and cook it. Okay, so I've cooked my breakfast sausage. And as you can see, it did render some fat. So I want to make sure I have enough oil or 
fat drippings in the pan. And, and this was actually a lean breakfast sausage. As you can see, it doesn't really render tons of fat. So I am going to add, let's see here. You could add rendered bacon fat to this if you have some left over. I'm just going to add a little bit, maybe two tablespoons of cooking oil to the pan. I want to make sure that the roux, the ratio of the fat to the flour works for the roux. Okay, so I think that'll do. Now I'm going to add in my six tablespoons of all-purpose flour to the pan. And you could go with four tablespoons and work with two, two and a half cups of whole milk, but we really like the gravy. So I like things saucy, so I'm going to go with the ratio of six tablespoons of all-purpose flour to three cups of whole milk. And I'm just going to work in this flour and sort of cook it and work it into the fat drippings to make a roux. Okay, so you'll see at the bottom of my pan, kind of like a floury crust started to form. That's a good time to start adding your milk. I'm adding maybe two cups and working it into the roux. Ultimately, I will be using three cups of whole milk. And you're just going to sort of scrape off that flour crust at the bottom and work it into your meat roux mixture. Okay, see how that's thickened and kind of picking up the fond and that flour crust at the bottom of the pan. So now I'm going to add more of my, another cup of my whole milk. And if I were to just add all three cups into my pan, it might create lumps and it might not give it a chance to soak into that roux and you sort of end up with just a runny gravy. So one cup at a time. So I've worked in my three cups of whole milk and it's perfect. And I failed to mention some tips that might help you get a lump-free gravy. First of all, you wanna work with a, depending on your heat source, I'm working on a small burner. So I was using maybe a medium to medium high heat, but if you have a larger burner that gives off a lot more heat and has more of a work surface of heat, you know, the heat source, then you'll wanna work with a medium heat. Nothing on high, cause you will scorch and burn things. Now secondly, once you've created your roux with the flour and the meat mixture, you'll want to work with room temperature to cold whole milk. Hot pan, cold milk equals no lumps. So now that my gravy is just exactly where I want it to be, you'll want to taste it. I tasted mine. It needs some salt to taste. I'm going to add two, two pinches. Probably a, a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon. One teaspoon for a peppery cream gravy. And that's it. I'm going to work that in and this gravy is done. And you'll want to keep a little extra milk on the side in case your gravy gets too thick by the time you serve it. So you're just going to open up your biscuit. Now you're just going to pour over your gravy on the biscuit. And you don't have to open it up. You could actually just use one whole biscuit. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching.